Welcome to MarcusNews.com. This is part two of the free special newsletter series on weight loss, where you will learn once and for all what causes fat and how to really get rid of it. Be inspired to a new life at MarcusNews.com. Today, medical expert James Sloan explains all the scientific reasons why people have weight problems, even if they eat healthy. Stick around, because at the end of this interview, I will list for you what to take and what to do for every condition. This video is seriously packed with helpful information. This is probably the biggest issue in the modern world is getting fat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like a lot of people they're they're kind of thin but they look like they're wearing a wetsuit. You know, they've got like a half inch foam suit on where you, they got like, you know, because fat distributes evenly all over your body and you don't really notice it until you've got an extra 20, 20 pounds is quite a bit of weight. You don't, until you try to lift a 20 pound weight, you don't realize how much it is. It's so evenly distributed, you can't be, you don't have to be like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for weight gain, which is one of the things that a lot of people don't really address. You know, I've heard so many times that people are just overeating, they're just overeating. No, it's not always the case. You there's know, a lot of raw vegans that are gaining weight right. and can't get rid of it. And they don't know, you know, they exercise, they eat non-processed, right. no carbs. It's one of the most common reasons is hypothyroidism and it's becoming more and more prevalent because we got so many estrogen compounds in our environment. You know, you got your estrogens in your plastics, you got estrogens in receipts you get from, you know, paper receipts at the store right. have BPA in it. The they're, water they're bottles ch they're drinking out of. Yeah, children get teething rings and stuff which are loaded with xenoestrogens right. and, and these estrogens suppress your thyroid. So that's one cause. And then there's chlorine in the water, there's fluoride in the water. Those displace iodine needed for the thyroid thyroid function. So again, it suppresses the thyroid. Uh, women are being given, or, 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 uh, given medication like Premarin. Premarin is pregnant marriage urine. Right, it's the right. source of it. It's an estrogen, but it's 3,000 times stronger than the body's own estrogen. Estrogens suppress the thyroid. So, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons for hypothyroidism too. It's not a single thing. Stress will even lower your thyroid. Right, right. And so there's, that's a very common reason for weight gain is just simply hypothyroidism. Then you got people consuming alcohols, and in excess, the, a lot of your alcohols contain high levels of estrogen again. Beer is notoriously high, uh, so is whiskey, ouzo, and gin. Like uh, male alcoholics can not only develop breasts, uh, but they also get that big beer belly. Mm -hmm. Well, the beer belly is from the estrogen in the beer, and men tend to deposit their weight around in the right. stomach. Um, the strong, well, there's there's different types of estrogens. We got to keep this in mind too, because there's everything from a phytoestrogen, which is a plant-based estrogen, right. which it's not really a true estrogen per se, but it has estrogenic effects, what they call it that. Then you've got your body's own estrogen. Now you have the estrogens from animals, like even if you eat organic beef or chicken, it's from a 2,000-pound animal that's got hormones and steroids exactly. that it naturally has to make it grow to be 2,000 pounds. Yeah, so you eat that, you start g gaining. Yeah. That's why bodybuilders love beef because it makes them big fast, but mm. it also makes everything else grow, like cancer. <laughs> exactly. But I've heard so many people say, oh, I'm not getting estrogen, I'm eating organic meats. And it's like, no, those meats still, the animal has its own hormones, and animal hormones tend to be way stronger. Again, like as I mentioned, Premarin is 3,000 times stronger than human estrogen. And so these estrogens from the animals that we're consuming are still, they tend to be much higher, uh, are stronger than what our bodies would naturally So what about the raw vegans who don't eat meat or have any animal products? How come they are still. A uh, common reason there again is the phytoestrogens. Now phytoestrogens can still suppress the thyroid. All plants contain phytoestrogens. But they're like one one thousandth the level of plastic or yeah they're oh chemical. yeah they're way lower because even compared to our own estrogens they average around uh, two to four hundred times weaker than our body's own estrogen so they are very very weak it just compounds. registers in the body that yeah th th this is taken care of we got estrogen we got this but it's so weak that it, it, it I mean if you don't eat plants you've got nothing you're gonna right. die <laughs> right you know? but it is still goitrogenic but you counter that very easily with iodine sources you know add a little seaweed I'm not a big fan of like the loop Googles or any of those iodine sources that people tend to take way, way too much iodine. Toxicity in iodine can start at one milligram and I've seen people recommending up to 300 or more milligrams per day which uh, even at that level that's yeah. what killed my uh, business partner's father. He got overdosed on iodine by his doctor yeah. and it was around uh, about 150 milligrams of iodine a day and he ended up dying from it. Yeah, so. I, I sell Irish moss now, which is a great seaweed. Yeah, the seaweeds are definitely the way to go with yeah. iodine. I uh, love I love that stuff. I, I put it in my smoothies. I plus nature when you get stuff, it's it's 
unlike an isolate, it's balanced. It's got everything. It's not just the selenium and the zinc and all the other co-nutrients right. And there that are, are things that, they, like nature, again, it balances itself out. And it, it, you, it's hard to OD on plants. You right. Know? Or seaweed or anything. There's, there's a misunderstanding. There's good fats and bad fats. Right. We get fat and we think it's because we eat a lot of fat. You know, our cells have membranes, which is basically made from fats, fats, fats lipids. lipids. Mm -hmm. Right. And our thousands of miles of myelin sheaths, right? Our, our uh -huh. entire nervous system, the brain is 80% fat. All the, if you don't have enough fats and oils in your body, you're, it's like the wiring that, or the electrical wiring of your body, the nervous system has no insulation. It starts like short circuiting, right? Right. And cholesterol. Um, yeah. Cholesterol is essential for the body. It's a healing agent. It helps to form, you know, certain vitamins, hormones, things like that. It's essential to the well, body. Well, like fat, there's good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, and, and uh, the body, only animals create cholesterol. Plants don't. So, so these people that are vegans or vegetarians, yeah, you're not getting any cholesterol from the food you eat, but if you're stressed, if you're, what, you know, like you're like living in a city or LA or whatever, you, you can die from cholesterol because you're stressing out too much. On the other hand, you can also die from not having enough cholesterol mm -hmm. because your hormones aren't being activated correctly because you need cholesterol for hormones. Yeah, in fact, low cholesterol is actually a major cause of heart attacks. Yeah. That's something a lot of people don't realize because they're always hearing the opposite, but they found that 50% of people who die of heart attacks have low to normal cholesterol levels. Exactly. And what happens when you have low cholesterol, you're not synthesizing sufficient levels of what's called prostaglandins. You know, certain prostaglandins dilate your blood vessels to maintain circulation. So when you lower your cholesterol too low, the prostaglandin levels drop and therefore the blood vessels constrict, cutting off the blood supply to things like the heart and the brain. Yeah. Dietary cholesterol is not a big factor for what's in your blood. Almost all the cholesterol in your blood actually comes from what your liver synthesizes. Because the problem is uh, with their theory about if you eat like high cholesterol foods like eggs or whatever, they're trying to claim it's going to raise your cholesterol. No, it doesn't because a lot of the foods that you eat are also high in sterols. Sterols have a very high affinity for cholesterol. Again, like I mentioned, the olive oil has a high affinity for uh, cholesterol, so it binds to the cholesterol so it cannot be absorbed by the body. So it gets flushed out of the system but never absorbed. So a lot of the stuff that's in your blood, you your body actually makes it. Exactly, the liver synthesizing it. Now what is it making it from? Again, I'll use uh, the building blocks of sterols and things like that to build uh, up cholesterol. But we need cholesterol for so many different reasons, again, the body. Everything from cell membranes to myelin right. to hormones. Right, and good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so our body needs that cholesterol. And so our liver synthesizes it. But like I said dietary cholesterol actually said plays a very minor, minor role. Even a lot of your cholesterol, like we know sterols lower cholesterol. Cholesterol. If you took something like olive oil or jaugalong is a, a tea, it's very, very high in sterols. And when you drink it, it lowers your cholesterol levels because you get all that cholesterol in your bile. So when you eat your foods and stuff, the bile gets released into the intestine with all that cholesterol. Now normally that gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. But when we drink these sterols, the sterols will bind to that cholesterol that's in the bile and prevent it from being reabsorbed. And so it actually ends up lowering our cholesterol levels. And if you take enough less of them with your food, mm -hmm. that'll help. Yeah, less than uh, emulsifier, so it has the two tails. One tail grabs a hold of fats, the other tail grabs a hold of water, links them together like a little bridge. So it makes the cholesterol water soluble, makes it much easier for the body to flush out. Right. And it'll clean the plaque out of your arteries for the same reason, yeah. because it makes that cholesterol water soluble. Well, insulin will stimulate fat production. So when you have a high blood sugar level, one of the things that can happen is that the uh, high insulin levels will cause fat deposits to form. The uh, insulin itself said does cause the fat deposits, but so do other things like hormones, estrogen, for example. Uh, progesterone can actually cause weight gain too, because you know, they're always talking about, oh, progesterone helps with weight loss. No, it actually causes weight gain. <laughs> the most common reason for gallstones is actually hormones. Um, women are more prone to gallstones than men are because they have a higher level of estrogen and progesterone. And what estrogen does is it causes more cholesterol to go into the bile. Now bile has a saturation point. Uh, the easiest way I explain it to people usually is if I take a glass of water, if I start stirring sugar in there, it'll dissolve, 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 dissolve until it reaches a saturation, saturation point. point. Yeah. Then once you supersaturate it, the excess precipitates out. 
your bile is like that with cholesterol so it can dissolve so much of the cholesterol but once it reaches its saturation point anything in excess precipitates out and starts to form the gallstones so estrogen causes the uh, cholesterol to go into the bile starting to saturate it progesterone is a smooth muscle relaxant so it prevents the contraction of the gallbladder that gets rid of that old saturated bile and allows new bile to come in so the combination of estrogen and progesterone actually increases increase the risk of gallstones by supersaturating the bile with cholesterol causing the stone formation. So that's, um, you know, the excess cholesterol in the bile is the primary cause of the gallstones. You know, there are biliary uh, stones too, but... Yeah, and again, lecithin would help that. Yeah, lecithin is good, fiber, uh, the bitters, because yeah. bitters not only increase your bile in, increase in your gallbladder, which again adds more fresh bile to dissolve more of that cholesterol, yeah. but it's also going to stimulate the gallbladder to contract. You want to get all that stagnant bile out, so fresh bile that's not already saturated comes in and helps to keep that cholesterol yeah. dissolved. So this is why we're having this important talk about um, fats and cholesterol and things like that. Um, obviously if you eat fried foods and you know the junk out there you're getting bad fats which is your liver is going to get overclogged with that but if you eat good oils and fats coconut olive avocados nuts seeds things like mm -hmm. that that's good stuff. Farmers used to feed coconut oil to their cows trying to make them fat and they all got really thin. <laughs> they actually got healthier and thin. Um, so explain to the people the difference between the good and the bad fats. Well, the real, real bad fats are generally the ones that are hydrogenated, which is a synthetic process where the, the liquid oils are made into more of a solid by the addition of hydrogen. So it's called hydrogenated oils, be it, uh, something like Crisco, uh, margarines, right. things like that. That's what makes chocolate stay hard in a brick mm -hmm. on a shelf for 20 years. <laughs> and then another one would be uh, trans fats. Right. When you uh, cook um, oils at high temperatures yeah. past the smoking point, then they yeah. can form what's called trans fat. There's even trans fats in taco shells and things that people think are all, oh, you know, this is no big deal. <laughs> I mean, there's anything that's obviously deep fried is trans fats, but anything that's crispy, that's got like, it just snaps like easy, it's probably a trans fat, you know, yeah. there's crackers, things. That's really bad news. But if you eat good fats. Yeah, the good fats, again, are required, as we mentioned, for the cell membranes, uh, myelin. You also have what's called your high density lipoprotein versus your low density lipoprotein. Right. Low density, of course, being your bad cholesterol. High density mm -hmm. being your good cholesterol. Right. Your HDL moves your LDL into the, uh, for you know, for processing or metabolism, so it gets broken down. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have uh, sterols in like olive oil. You mentioned olive oil, and olive oils are high in sterols. Sterols have other properties, such as again dilating of blood vessels, uh, reducing inflammation, mm -hmm. things like that, which is why it's a heart healthy oil. And a lot of long living people, long living cultures, are in the Mediterranean where they have large amounts of olive oil that that's in their diet. And you know they they don't eat perfect. They, but they're closer to nature. I mean, they still eat cheese and goat and <laughs> whatever, but they live longer because they have a lot of olive oil and garlic and, you know, things like that. A lot of antioxidants in some of the oils too. You got your uh, polyphenols. You can eat a lot of avocados and coconuts and, and nuts and seeds and, and stuff and, and not get fat. Matter of fact, you probably get thinner doing it. A lot of people are getting uh, up in arms about olive oil is not natural. Uh, any kind of fats and oils that you eat like coconut oil, olive oil, it's not natural. You have to eat the olive or the coconut, otherwise you're imbalanced and it's bad for you. I really disagree with that because, well, for one thing, if you're going to try to get your uh, oils basically from the olives, it's like good luck. I mean, how many olives are you going to have to eat in order to get the same level of these beneficial oils in your system? And like I said, there's a lot of beneficial compounds within the oil, so you pretty much you do have to extract it. But what happens if you do have a little too much olive oil? Does the body get rid of it or does it turn bad? And is it bad for you? Yeah, it's most of probably a laxative effect. I mean, body gets rid of it. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. Right. So, what are people so afraid of? What, what do they think is wrong with having a little too much oil? You know, I know some oils are afraid of things like they're hexane extracted. You know, some oils are right. not all. But, but if you like got a bunch of olives and you squished them and you got oil out of it and then you, you know, put it on your salad or. or 
like I said, some of the longest living people live in the Mediterranean where they have lots of olive oil. Mm -hmm. So, weight gain has a lot of different causes. Uh, people that are on antidepressants can gain weight. So, drugs, medication, stress, stress diabetes, diabetes, sugar, carb. Yeah, there's so many different causes of weight gain. There's not a real simple, you know, one cure all for everybody. Right. The first thing to do is what are you doing that's not natural? Yeah. Right? You're in a car that's got plastic fumes. You're drinking out of a plastic water bottle. You're eating lunch at a cafeteria with plastic forks and food meat that's got natural even if it's organic meat it's it's got natural steroids or uh, hormones and, and estrogenics in it stress the modern world right R relationship issues money issues yeah, and there's ways of dealing with stress uh, work on your adrenal glands again your adrenal glands produce your anti-stress hormones keep you calm keep you on an even keel um, you can do something simple if you're in a real stressful situation. Go into a dark room, light a candle, watch that flame flicker. It's very right. calming. Pets are right. great. You adopt a dog. And then there's the basic stuff too, like breathing. <laughs> yeah. Vitamin C, right? The her herbal vitamin yeah, that C. That supports the adrenals again. And there's certain herbs that are good for that. Whatever the source of stress is, I know this is easier said than done, but distance yourself from that stress. That job's not worth dying for. Exactly. The less you have, the more freer you'll be. And even if it means starting over with nothing it's better than killing yourself over a, a lot of stuff that's just not not worth it and you'll always be taken care of somehow I mean it's, it's but anyway so weight gain boils down to what are you doing that's not natural what are you doing that is not found in nature if you were just sitting on a rock in nature <laughs> as, as every other living thing does or you're just doing something wrong like eating a gallon of ice cream at a time because you're a depressive eater right. you know a lot of people they they overeat because of simply depression and carbohydrates will stimulate a serotonin rise inside the brain yeah. and so it helps to keep, and keep them on an even keel yeah. so instead of doing something else to raise their serotonin levels like drinking chamomile tea, right. they're going out and they're eating a gallon of ice cream instead and getting all those extra calories. Or feeling better by getting rid of the ne negativity in your life mm -hmm. that you're trying to deal with by having comfort foods and junk and, and mm -hmm. things like that. It's like it's all it's all coding the problem with some kind of instant gratification which is temporary and then you pay for it the next day and then you got twice as many problems. Now you're stressing out even more and getting yeah. more weight gain and then you die. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta look even with depression again, lots of causes, and so yeah. Yeah. it could be lack of dopamine, lack of acetylcholine, lack of norepinephrine, lack of serotonin, high prolactin levels, low uh, uh, low prostaglandin levels, uh, adrenal dysfunction, uh, thyroid dysfunction. A lot of medications can cause depression. I mean, the list goes on and on. Things can cause depression, yeah. and so that's another one of the topics that we'll have to cover that one of these days because. Uh, it's a big pet peeve of mine with doctors throwing you know, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors at people with depression without trying to figure out what's causing their depression. Right, I know. Well, that's what with any health thing. Like, I never hear a doctor asking, trying to figure out what's causing the problem. He's just yeah. here, take this drug, it'll hide the symptom. Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks, James. It's been a pleasure. Okay. All right. Thanks. Lower estrogen levels by eating organic foods without pesticides and chemicals that have an estrogen like effect. Get more fiber in your diet. The liver dumps estrogen into its bile acids and fiber helps these bile acids pass through the intestines and eliminate. So eat lots of whole raw plant foods, especially ones with polyphenols because polyphenols reduce estrogen. These foods include chia seeds, sesame, oats, rice bran, flax, and buckwheat. Since the liver metabolizes and breaks down estrogen in the body, keep your liver clean with bitter herbs and plants because bitter stuff cleans the liver and helps digest and sulfur is part of this bitterness, so take MSM, dandelion, watercress, pine needles, onions, horseradish, garlic, and bitter green leafy vegetables. Broccoli sprouts have 50 times more sulforaphane than broccoli itself. Drink a glass of lemon water every morning to help clean your liver and also take my liver formula. You can't take too much of it, it's a great formula. B vitamins are necessary for healthy liver function and digestion, especially folic acid or vitamin B9. Just one spoonful of my Wild Force Green Formula has 1,370% of RDA folate. The Wild Force Green Formula has over 6,000% of the RDA of vitamin B5, panathenic acid in one spoonful. 3,770% of riboflavin, vitamin B2. There's even some B12 in this amazing formula, plus of course almost every mineral known to man needed for bodily functions and and four grams of fiber per spoonful. Stop drinking milk. 80% of estrogens come from cow's milk and your body can't handle those high levels of estrogen like that. Ah!
Make your own almond milk. It's in our uncookbook Love on a Plate. Stop drinking alcohol. It fries your liver. And on top of that, beer and wine is high in estrogens. Caffeine, fat, and sugar can increase estrogen levels in the body. Even just one cup of coffee can raise estrogen levels. Four cups a day can raise estrogen levels as much as 70%. Eat less meat or cut meat altogether. Even if it's organic, these animals have hormones 3,000 times stronger than humans. Exercise more. Come on, at least 20 minutes a day. This has one of the greatest impacts on estrogen levels and starts lowering estrogen immediately. Do lots of aerobic stuff like walking, running, bicycling, swimming, hiking, or just turn up the music and dance a lot. Get rid of the stress in your life. It's not worth it. In order to deal with stress, the body burns large amounts of progesterone and creates cortisol, the stress and death hormone. The byproduct is more estrogen. If anything's depressing you, get over it. Read my book, Instructions for a New Life. Proper sleep is needed for proper hormone levels. Melatonin helps protect your body against estrogen dominance. But proper melatonin needs to be produced and regulated by your body, not a pill. Healing hormones are released between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. and you need to be asleep for that to happen. Do not snack or eat for four hours before bed. Otherwise, your body will be busy digesting all night and not be fully asleep and you'll wake up tired with messed up hormones. My Night Rebuild formula helps you sleep and rebuild hormones. Avoid plastic water bottles and plastics holding any kind of liquid or juice. Avoid plastic food wrap. Don't breathe fumes from bleach or chlorine. Get a whole house water filtration system to take out the chlorine and fluoride, two major causes of thyroid problems, estrogen, and weight gain. Every time you take a hot shower, you are directly breathing in chlorine and fluoride from the steam. For thyroid issues, take seaweed like my Irish moss. When it's in its natural state like this, you don't have to worry about taking too much because it's balanced out by all the other minerals and co-elements. Seaweed like my Irish moss is a better way to get your iodine than taking iodine drops. Stress also burns out your thyroid and adrenal, so do whatever it takes to get rid of the stress in your life. If you feel trapped or you're not excited when you wake up in the morning, you need to read my pocketbook, Instructions for a New Life. Get it right now. It will change your life. If money is your problem, read The Prosperity Secret. All of these books and products are at HealAnything.com. To really clean out your body, you need to do a serious cleanse as well as changing what and how to eat. This is all outlined in the book Heal Yourself 101. It's helped people overcome everything from diabetes to cancer and of course lose all that extra unwanted weight. For rebuilding your adrenals, you need lots of vitamin C. My Wild Force Vitamin C is the highest herbal source of vitamin C on the planet. The Night Rebuild formula helps rebuild the adrenals and the Wild Force Green formula helps supply with all the minerals it needs. Of course you need to eat right. For losing weight and helping almost any health condition, nothing on planet Earth beats eating raw, un cooked plant food the way nature intended. It doesn't matter how much or what it is, just eat raw uncooked plants. You can't really overeat them anyway and it's not boring food. For the most amazing tasting and easy to make raw vegan food ever, get the uncooked book Love on a Plate. If you eat estrogenic or goitrogenic foods like soy, flax, or kale, then put some seaweed in your diet like my fresh Irish moss and you'll be fine. Plus it helps your body form collagen to help smooth out wrinkles and tighten your skin. Again, you can get everything at HealAnything.com. And yes, our herb jars are BPH-free. Stay tuned for part three of this weight loss special series, where next time we interview Kara Brotman. What she eats, what she does, and what her secrets are for looking amazing as she slowly approaches 50. Stay tuned to MarcusNews.com. Change your life right now.